Right, thank you. Um, that's Romans 5, and in that we're going to be moving on today to a new topic. Uh, we've, for the last few weeks, four weeks I think, starting from the start of Romans, maybe from the end of the previous chapter, um, the previous book, we've been doing authentic faith, but now we're moving on to authentic hope. It is though, because they go in succession, a follow-on from last week's passage, which was about Abraham and him not reckoning his circumstances and having faith despite the circumstances. If you were here last week, you should know what I'm talking about. By the way, I just want to say, while I've got the, the microphone, if you, if you listen to these preachers, I suggest that you take notes. Not, not just to mine, and I'm not saying my preacher's going to be whatever, but I take notes into this book here, um, and I often refer back to it, and I often think, oh, I can't even remember what the preacher was about, but I know it's about something good, and that's when I go back to my notes, and then I go, oh wow, this was a wonderful point, this is what I needed to hear right now, so if you don't do that. Also, in the Bible app, if, I don't know which Bible apps most people have, but the, the biggest one is the version Bible app, and you can highlight the verses, and I love to highlight the verses. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to start with is we're going to look at the, the focus verses of today's passage, and to start with, we're actually going to be talking about boasting. Uh, I'm actually the best at boasting, I don't know if you know. Um, the, the best you've ever seen. If you ever meet another person better at boasting, I'd be surprised. Um, I'm joking. <laughs> or I hope I'm joking. We're going to be talking about <laughs> a kind of righteous boasting um, that's found in this passage, and it's in Romans 5, 2 to 5, especially verses 3 to 5 that we're going to be uh, going through in today's message. It says, though, in verse 2, it says, Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance character, and character produces hope. Now, you can see that in those verses, none of those, you can't see the word boast, can you? It's like, oh, you're looking for it. Can any, any guesses as to what word actually means boast in this? It's a verb, obviously. Rejoice. Good. Yeah, rejoice. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Actually means to boast in the hope. In the Greek, it actually means to boast in other other verses in the Bible that um, use the same Greek word. It's been translated to boast. Um, and we might look at some of those shortly. But remember that, because we're going to come to it. And the fact is that, is, is, it, is it right to boast? Probably not. Not in the traditional sense, not in the boastful, prideful sense. But if we look at 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 to 10, we see that Paul, again, speaking to the Corinthian church, he uses the word boast. He says that I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul, I don't know if you know how well you know Paul, but Judging by his, his catalogue and his, his resume, he had a lot to boast about. Probably much more than, much more than I do. Um, he was an apostle, after all. Uh, but he didn't boast about all the things he himself had achieved. He didn't boast about all the brilliant early churches that he planted. Instead, he boasted in his weakness, because that's where Christ shines through and makes Paul the strongest he can be. In his weakness, he is strong, it says at the bottom. It says, for when I am weak, I am strong. Note that I'm not, <laughs> I'm not um, promoting boasting or being boastful in the pride sense. But the fact is that we, we can boast in the glory of God that makes up for our downfalls and makes us strong in our weakness when we rely on him. And it says that Paul's content through suffering, which we're going to get onto. Um, 
because in the focus verses of today's chapter, it also says that we rejoice in our sufferings. We can boast even when we're suffering because that's where Christ is shining through. How good is that? Sorry. Um, the boasting that's spoken about in Romans 5 is a boasting in the hope of the glory of God. And it's a boasting that transcends any kind of worldly hope. That, that hope in the glory of God, it goes far beyond any kind of worldly hope that we can have. And it's what we're going to come to by the end of our analysis of this passage. But we can boast in Christ, boast in Christ alone. And we can boast in the fact that we're saved and we've been given the gift of eternal life. Because God's grace covers it all. And we know that even in our sufferings, we can boast. So that means we can rejoice in our sufferings, just like the, the verse says. It says then, in the second part of it, it says, suffering produces endurance. What, why exactly? I want to ask you a question, and it's not an easy question to answer, um, because it might feel really personal, or you might have something that you're going through right now, but answer it if you can. How exactly can a Christian suffer? Any, any magnitude. Persecution. Persecution. <coughs> yeah. Well, worldly well, persecution, persecution from others. Rejection. Rejection. <coughs> any others? Judgment. Okay, judgment. Okay. The attacks of the enemy, like health wise and good, yeah. Finance. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, attacks from the enemy. Locking yeah. yourself away from other people. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Depression, things like that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. A, dis a disconnect mm. um, when you're going through a disconnect, a period where you may not hear God as loudly. Mm. Yeah. yeah, good. That's, that can be a suffering. <laughs> good. Sure. Yeah. I think um, suffering, suffering like that produces endurance in even staying in the faith. The fact is that uh, there's a lot of people that don't have the endurance to stay in the faith when they experience things like that, or they experience attack from the enemy, or they experience any one of the sufferings we just listed. These aren't small things we're talking about. We're not talking about, uh, I don't know, uh, forgetting our wallet when we go to the shop, or you know, a small little suffering like that. We're talking about big things, big, <coughs> mental, emotional problems, maybe not feeling, feeling isolated, feeling like we're in a valley and not, not hearing from God. Yeah. Um, but it takes endurance some, in those moments to even stay in the faith. Yeah. And that's what, that's what comes out of the suffering. I, I listed, um, you can experience just the natural consequences of sin um, <clears throat> and how there's no, there's no other way of saying it, but it just worsens your life. You can have persecution for your faith, your identity in Christ. You can be persecuted for that. Jesus said, said that would happen. So did Paul. Paul. Jesus said that if those, you know, I was persecuted, so will you be if you follow me. You can experience on the greatest scale torture and even, even death, martyrdom for Christ. Sinful strongholds, addictions, <laughs> that kind of thing, spiritual warfare, and attacking the enemy. Those are the things that came to my mind immediately. But what does it mean to endure these things, though? Why is it that we have to go through suffering to build endurance? Hey, Anyone? Hey, oh, hold, hey, hold, hey, hold, hey, hold. Stop it. Mark, I knew, I knew Mark would pipe up on this. Does anyone recognize this guy other than Mark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I'm a big fan of this guy in, in the feats he's achieved. Mm. Um, his name's, I don't quite know how to pronounce it, but it's Elliot Kipchoge, or Kipchoge, or something like that. Um, and he's a champion in, uh, endurance runner. Yeah. So we're talking about endurance. He's a long distance runner, he's a marathon runner, and he's achieved world records. One of his, the, the official world record he holds is doing a marathon in two hours and one minute and a couple of seconds. He's done an unofficial one and he got under two hours. Um, but I'm going to show you a video quickly, just just part of a video um, of people attempting to match his pace. Watch this. Thank <laughs> you. 
would be some godly character traits that we should really look to implement in our lives with, with the hope of the help of the Holy Spirit, of course. How do we practically go about refining our character to be more like Jesus? Like I just said, you can have a knowledge of the truth and you can always better your knowledge of the truth by reading your Bible. Um, spending quiet time with God as well, that massively helps because it allows Him to be the remedy for our worries and our stress and our suffering. Enduring through that produces that in our character as part of our character. And finally, I'll go on to the, the final bit. It says that character produces hope as that last part of those key verses. These verses as well, everyone knows um, Jeremiah 29, 11, I think, if you don't read it up there. Romans 15, verse 4, it compounds on what I just said about reading your Bible. It says that everything was written, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures, we might have hope. We're talking about a divine hope, a godly hope. A hope in the glory of God. And the fact is that character produces hope because if we have the character to recognize that God's ever present and He's watching our whole lives and He's watching all of our hardships and He's supporting us even when we don't, rec- don't, don't realize it, then we can have hope that God is protecting us and providing for us in those moments. If we make it part of our character that we've been redeemed through Christ's sacrifice, then we can have hope, eternal hope, that God is merciful to forgive thanks to that and that we're saved and destined for eternal life. Some might argue that, and uh, I suspect many in, in today's world might argue that we live in a hopeless world. You might ask the question, what even is there to be hopeful for? But I I disagree, actually. I say there's a lot to be hopeful for. I've got up on the screen, and if you want to read them, they're the, they're the verses that I gave to the kids' work for last week, or some of the verses, and they're God's promises in in the Bible. Because believe it or not, the, the kids read the same Bible as us. <laughs> you know, maybe a different version, maybe. But those are... God's promises, and you can maybe pick one out and feel led by God to one. They, they each speak about different things. But I said there's a lot to be hopeful for. Firstly, in the promises of God, I can always be hopeful that those are true because I believe in Him to be faithful to His promises. But I'm also I'm hopeful to see my loved ones come to Christ. I'm hopeful for, I'm, honestly, I'm hopeful for Jesus' return yeah. on this earth and for eternal life because that's going to be great. I'm hopeful, even in a world that's running quite low on hope, and so my hope, despite my sufferings and despite my circumstances, is in the glory of God, and it shows the glory of God through me. I'm very hopeful. Are you? Think about that. So, to close, and in response, these are questions for thought and discussion. Don't, don't just think about these and forget about them. They're also thought for discussion. They're questions for discussion. Also, don't be afraid to approach me or any leader in this church or, you know, even talk it through with just anyone in this fellowship. Share, share inspiration, share ideas, and hold each other accountable. The first question I've suggested is, how could you improve in your godliness with regards to suffering? Think about how Jesus experienced suffering and went through it and the attitudes that he held. It wasn't about putting on a smile when he didn't feel like smiling, that kind of thing. It was far deeper than that. It was that in his character, he actually embodied the fruits of the Spirit. And we can take inspiration from that. How can you become better at enduring? You long distance runners, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about enduring suffering, especially spiritually, and having hope through that. Because what in your character 
needs to develop to be more godly so that you can have hope and rejoice. You can boast in the glory of God. Think about that. Please come to me after the service and discuss that with me. I'm going to pray to close and keep those questions in your mind. Keep those ideas that you've got flowing because I can't speak. I can't read into your minds to think in what exactly in your character is or in need right now of this, of this message, but you can. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the reality that we can hold on to, that we are saved. Lord, we thank you for your grace to forgive. And we thank you that even in our suffering, we can have hope. Because suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. We thank you for the, the truth of these verses today and this passage today. We thank you for the truth of your word as a whole, and so we look to that as our as our rock. Lord, we look to you as our rock, in, especially in the trying times, Lord, but in all times. We love you, Lord, and we commit to taking on this message and listening to, listening to it and obeying it, Lord, because it's a message from you that you want us to be hopeful. 